I bought this house in 1988. I had been wanting a larger, older house, and this was probably about the only area of town I could um, afford a house. This was a spot where historic preservation had come to a halt in 1979. I knew it was strong for preservation north of Forsyth Park, and I knew it was coming this way, but it was just a matter of time. What drew me to this house was the fact that it had an unusual facade. The crazy cone roof tower shape and the gingerbread and the tall angular shape to the house and the odd bay window that juts out at an angle. I thought this house had some character. It really had a little bit of spunk and everything else in, in spite of incorrect alterations over the years. This structure is a conglomeration of a couple of different styles. If you start at the top of the house, it is a cruciform roof shape. In other words, it has four gables that form up like a cross. But yet there's a splayed side gable that goes in one direction, and there's extra gables on the kitchen addition in the back. Together with two gables on the garage, this property has 11 gables. This side porch was another one of my cost overrun creations. We had originally designed just double doors that would step down into the garden, but I wanted a vantage point to enjoy my garden, to get out in the open and extend the dining room a little bit. I also had three salvage columns that were very close to those on the front of the house. They had come from a tear down on Barnard Street. These columns were sawed in half. Their center was whittled out. And yes, there is a metal pin from the top to the foundation that keeps these all intact. So we did meet with standards and kept a good historic column going. The garden is of my creation. Um, I always develop a garden wherever I'm living. I like a garden that I call a pickup garden. I look for discarded items and other things and drag them home and incorporate them. Here are various cobblestones, Belgian blocks, and other stones from trips to the mountain and others that comprise the border of this raised bed here. Over here we have a statue of a Greek boy, but it sits on a terracotta sewer pipe that the city left on the side of the road. These tall columns here are solid heart pine. These are the ones that came from a teardown on 38th Street. As soon as I had bought the house, everything that could go wrong went wrong. Everything that could cost more, cost more, and pretty soon I called it Nightmare on Duffy Street. <laughs> After I bought it, I took about a month of changing paint and doing essentials, and then I moved into it, and it was kind of the handyman special. And I started learning many arts, such as plastering, as well as saw all sorts of woodworking and other things, so I could take on some of the burden of getting this place back into shape. As with most houses, all the bells and whistles are in the front of the house, and that's true here in the hall in the front two parlors. We have wonderful ceiling medallion that is original, the newel post and the stair rail, as well as the stair itself are original. The stair is originally cantilevered. It is open at the bottom to allow for an alcove. The theme in here is a little different. The top cornice up here is decorated in stenciled Egyptian designs. And notice the walls have been done as mylar blocks. This was done with border lines. The shadows are done with pencils. The finish was um, literally sponged on and finally sealed behind a urethane coat. So it is not wallpaper, it is paint on the surface. Another unique feature is the dancing lilies that imitate the height of the rail. This is a copy of a mansion in Philadelphia that was torn down. 
This is the front parlor. And in the style of Victorians, this is where you put all of your glitz and fancy and expensive stuff. And you see it here. It has Bradbury's tulip iris wallpaper dancing across the top in colors. The slate mantle in here is a grade higher. It has steps on it, three steps on it to give it a little more character. And also the wonderful double doors here, the pocket doors that separate it from the second parlor would also be a fine piece. Once again, this room has an odd configuration, many areas for conversation, nooks and other things. This second parlor was originally the dining room for the house. Behind me there would have been a single door with a transom going into the hall. To my left, the doorway into the dining room was a china closet per se with a glass door where you would keep all of your crockery. And in this corner would have been the passage to the kitchen from the dining room. Um, things had been changed and I altered them again to get things more correct by opening this for the dining room and instead of installing another door that had been there and losing a lot of wall space I decided to keep the top parts of doors transoms to make two windows that would be at the same height and match the transoms so light from the stairwell could come in here and open this room out a bit there. The, the mantle itself from the shelf down is original to the house and it is gray slate that has been marbleized and ebonized. But the over mantle, which is firmly attached to the wall, I bought at auction from an estate in the Hudson Valley and had it shipped down here and they fit well together and make for a very interesting feature for the house. The house has an unusual character, since, particularly since I've chosen to interpret it as 1870s Victorian aesthetic. I've kept it in kind of the same sort of configurations it would be when it was built in the 1890s. So the house has a good feel to it now, and it's been a, a great place to entertain and bring people. I particularly like to host out-of-town groups, special events who come to Savannah for meetings and other things. In the original house, this dining room was two spaces. I would be standing in a back hall and a back porch. This would be the kitchen in front of me. But it had been altered with time and I decided to go ahead and combine these spaces and build a large dining room. The space was originally a kitchen with a cook stove backing into the fireplace and a sink on the far wall there and a single window here. This is a considerable difference from the way it was built, but it provides for a good entertaining space that wasn't here before. The Bradbury wallpaper is a lattice design and it is taken from the wallpaper found in the Mark Twain home in Connecticut. What we also have here is a series of three stained glass windows with jewels above me. These I added to fit the dining room and its colors and to open up light while retaining some privacy with a nearby neighbor. This would do both tricks. Above the window is a series of script in Latin and it's Panem Nostrum Quotidianum. And in Latin that says our daily bread a motto very appropriate for a dining room. This kitchen is add-on space. When I bought the house, this was a screen porch with a view of the lane. So this is quite a, a change here. This gives plenty of space to put in a cooking staff or to cook big meals. I've actually used half of the island as a buffet line when I was having people sitting at the table and it wasn't going to be served. The cabinets extend to the ceiling and that gives for plenty of space for hurricane supplies if there is a need to hunker down. The copper ceilings here in the kitchen and in the dining room and also the backsplashes were suggested by the builder. He had been installing some copper ceilings across town in his work, but I looked through the designs and the colors and I liked the copper tint. 
I thought this would make for a very interesting glow and aura to the room. And I'm quite happy with how it turned out. It has a baked on surface and there hasn't been one bit of tarnish in the 10 years that it's been hanging. And the house was deconstructed and reconstructed and it was an ongoing process of finding old photographs to figure out what was missing and what we could put back and how we could restage things and between 2006 and 2008 the house got a new exterior all of the asphalt shingle left the outside it got new wiring it got new plumbing it got new hvac systems and the walls were all resurfaced so and tons of insulation of all sorts under over and in the walls and and that has really tightened things up and made it a much more livable house I call this neighborhood the SOFO neighborhood South Forsyth this area is growing in leaps and bounds and it's only begun besides all of the restaurant and um, facilities and shopping facilities in the area, they're only adding more. We still have mixed income people here. We still have a healthy dose of students as well as older retirees, as well as um, minorities. They're still in place here. And of course, we have a mixture of um, tourist and staycation rentals. So we are much more diverse. We have more to offer. And I think all of that is beginning to dawn on people that this is a new hot neighborhood. The upstairs hall is more or less used as an art gallery for hanging um, art and also brighter light and other things. It's featured by the curved wall, which has both ends of it open here. One of the larger details in the reconstruction of the house was cutting it open to the attic area, which would be utilized. This front bedroom was originally built as the master bedroom. It is an unusual shape because it has the bay window, it has an archway here, and it has offset walls. That makes 21 vertical planes that compose the walls in this room. This is the master bedroom. It had been a dark little strange room with only two windows and no other exits into it, but I removed some closets that intruded on the inside wall, and I also added two windows on the side here that had been lost to an earlier reconstruction, and that added a lot more space and a lot more light in here. Notice also it does have the original mantles in the upstairs, just like in the downstairs, which is very rare in a house of this age to have these features, the first things that are stripped from most buildings. This area is basically the master bath and the master closet off the master bedroom. This had been a third bedroom on this floor, but I needed space for all of that. And it includes now washing and drying, a storage closet, and a jacuzzi tub. This is the third floor that was carved out of attic space that had never been utilized by this house previously. I enjoyed having the space and the colored art glass, Queen Anne glass as they call it, in the front and back gable of this space had never been utilized or enjoyed by anyone. I did put new shaped glass here to give more light to come through the cut through to the bottom. But there was always the question of how to get furniture and other things up here when you have a spiral stair. And we get inspiration from Amsterdam. First of all, things can get pulled up through this area with ropes. And the other thing is this rail detaches so things can swing in. So using a technique of the old world, we can move things in and out of here.
The house has changed considerably since I've had it. Um, the feel became more warm and folksy after I finally got in it and found that the shape and space pleased me greatly. The neighborhood became a quirky place to live. It was kind of fun to be here. And eventually the house became a very fond place to be. And as I have written over the transom of the front door, H-O-M-E.